All right, everybody. Michael from EXO. So we are going to be replacing an oil pan gasket on this Honda Civic. Try to get it in focus. I think the sun's too bright. I have to get a shout out though. Enforce by BG Products. They got those three rusted bolts off of there without breaking anything. Super impressed. If you're a shop owner, you need to buy Enforce ASAP. So, gonna go ahead and remove. I already started. We'll get this cover plate off of here and then we'll start taking off all the 10 millimeters and then that way we can get that pan gasket down take a look see what uh, see what all is going on in there and try to stop some of these leaks all right so we got the 10 millimeter bolts out all the way around and then just take a screwdriver and I just put it between the pan and the little spot right there and was able to pop it off and it came off no problem. So we'll remove this gasket and then we'll get it all cleaned up in order to put a little RTV down and then reassemble it the way we took it off and then that will stop that oil pan from leaking and it will make everybody happy. When checking our pistons, well, the rods, the connecting rods, I found that this one has some play in it. Let's see if I can get it on camera. So, I already took the oil pump off. It was two 10 mils, two 12s. There's a gasket right there. Oil pump is now off. So now I am breaking these loose. They're 14 mils. And then I will take this on down. And then I'll need to pop these off and put some main bearings in there. And I got my 17 on the crank pulley so that way I can rotate it and bring them down as I need to in order to access them easier. Okay, so I got the 14 millimeters off. That then allows you to take this girdle off. I just used a pry bar to kind of get it started because you can see all those dowels hold it up in there. So pull it straight down, set it off the side. Just know that a whole bunch of oil's in there and it's gonna spill all over your pants, as you see. So now that we actually have a little bit more access to, you see it, this one's like maybe starting to go but this culprit, I mean, you can even hear it. It's, it's pretty bad. I don't, let me see if I can get these other two. And I'm just spinning it with the 17. So that one's pretty good. And that one's good. Oh, uh, there's actually a little play in that one. So I got two of them removed. Now this, as you remember, was the loose one and it was way easier to get the bottom portion off because it was already loose. This one was still in pretty good shape, so as you remember, uh, a little bit harder to get off. So I just tapped it with a uh, rubber mallet in order to get a little crease on both sides. And then I was able just to kind of slowly wedge it, pull it at the same time straight down. So that way then it would come off. Now, so this is the good one. As you can see, it's not terrible. The bearing's still in there. This one is the one that was bad. And the bearing, you can just see, it is chewed up. It is not a happy camper. So, we'll go ahead and get those replaced after I remove the middle two. And then, of course, you want to sand the crank. Because you can see there's some scarring right here. Get the light a little better. So, I will get some wet sandpaper and actually get that all smoothed out. This side is not as bad, but we'll still give it a light sanding. As you can see, got that sanded down some. With 
with this one being on the right being the worst, it's still got, you know, it's got some pretty good uh, scarring. I still have to clean the actual rods up underneath there. But I actually saw a trick on YouTube, and I will post the link below, and he had showed me, like, not me personally, but he got wet sandpaper, and so this is a thousand grit, just make sure you get it hit with the WD-40. I just cut it into a strip, and then I used a string. In his video, he used the shoe string. And basically, you wrap the sandpaper all the way around, and then wrap the shoe string around a couple times. And then you're, with both hands, are able to grab it and pull like back and forth like you're flossing. And then that way it will actually smooth the thing all the way around instead of it just being like in one motion and that way you can kind of keep it circular so check out his channel as well for more tips and tricks all right now that we got our rod bearings we went ahead and used these guys right here for a part number if you need it now what I did is I went ahead and I used some assembly lube and then I put it on the inside and then placed those bearings on in there after cleaning them up. And now we're ready for install. All right, so now that we have those reinstalled on there, we are actually gonna torque them down. And when I mean them, the caps. So it's gonna be 24 foot pounds for the single cam. Now, when we put the uh, engine girdle back on there, we are actually going to tighten it down to 18 foot-pounds and then 33 foot-pounds, and that will be the 14 mils that we took out earlier that actually helped that girdle or cradle on there, and that actually holds the bearing for the main bearing, basically. So 24 foot-pounds, for these guys and then 18 and then 33 to finish it off got the rod bearings replaced swapped out the uh, o-ring to the distributor to help stop that leak got it filled up with three and a half quarts of oil and Ian is gonna fire it up for us